so we'll start with the basic concepts of you know python language to begin with and we will try to understand the basic history and you know some basic facts about this language first before we learn how the interpreter works for python language how the coding actually works in python language okay so okay right see you know our ultimate objective is to be you know to write the python scripts effectively but first let's understand you know how uh, what exactly is python so python is a object oriented scripting language you know here scripts are written right of course they do a particular purpose but it's a object everything is object in python you know i will i will uh, make you understand this that everything is a object in python you know you can call functions on any functionality right so here everything is a object you know and on these objects i will tell you how to run the control statements you know conditional loops functions all that we will learn but first of all it is a object oriented scripting language right now uh, that python is a object oriented scripting language now who is the author for this language you know who is the first interpreter for this language right and when this language got created so this language was created in year 1989 you know the christmas holidays of year 1989 by a dutch research programmer you know dutch dutch based programmer and the name of a person was guido van rousseau you know he is the one who created the interpreter for the python language right so that's the basic history and python name was inspired from a circus you know with the name monty python flying circus so just for the knowledge right the name actually got inspired from that particular place only right so he is the owner who is the original benevolent dictator for life bdfl for python language even till date the updates come from python we are in version 3.11 right even till date all updates of python are given to us you know by his team right so that is the basic fact then comes the core fundamentals behind this language you know what is the core philosophy behind the python language see you know i will tell you how to install pycharm or we can use visual studio also to run the python scripts right so if i create one python file let's say just to show the basic fundamentals so i have a python project let's say let's say with the name python project 2 right so i created this project under this location right and here in python project 2 i'm going to create a file and i will write just one thing you know to see the basic fundamentals and i will run that file right so what i was planning to write i was planning to write import this in this file let it come up so let me you know tell you what was the core fundamental for example the very first fundamental which they have mentioned is that you know just a statement i mean it's a english statement that you know beautiful is better than ugly right like these uh, they have mentioned multiple core philosophies for this for the foundation of this language explicit is better than implicit simple is better than complex right just the core philosophy behind the you know language but before i show you the core fundamentals see all python files will end up with the extension .py right and earlier python version 2 was there so all backward level compatibility still exist you know we can 
convert python 2 to python 3 anytime if a need arises right as i told you in python 3 everything is an object you know all data types functions classes they are built on unique python object model basically right everything is an object in python like this so if i hit file for project the code class right and i am going to write just import this and i am going to save it and i will open it here right Let's run this file and post it on code explicit is better than implicit let me show you what your code does right So you see all these philosophies comes I was telling you know explicit is better than implicit simple is better than complex complex is better than you know simple mm -hmm. is better than complex means you if you can make it simple do it now and if it complexity is there then never complicate things so such complexity su such uh, philosophies are there right right and if you if you want to install python in your machine there is this you know python.org uh, website is there it's uh, you know from here i can download python version 3.1.2 for windows similarly it will detect your operating system if it is mac or ubuntu right you can download python from here and once python is downloaded either in pycharm you can simply type p uh, you know you can check the python version if i check the version like this right if i check the version right let the uh, I'll just we'll just get the version checked right but and from here command prompt also python version we will check the python version from the python script itself right for example you know just an example of a script so we can load any module like this and once a, a you know module is loaded then i can check you know my python version is uh, on this object i can call a format function and on format I can use my module and I can call python version function once I save this and if I run this file all over again uh, why it is not printing the python version platform dot python version it is not printing that Let me also download and install the same. Right? And if you want to download PyCharm, if you want to download PyCharm, you can simply go to JetBrains website or you can simply type download PyCharm Community Edition. Right? From JetBrains website, the PyCharm version can be downloaded from here. And if we, if you want to download Visual Studio, then you can go to codevisualstudio.com and you can download, you know, for JavaScript, Node.js, React, right? Python-based projects. Visual Studio will also can be an editor, you know, 
for Windows for zip file 64 bit 32 bit we can download from here now when I install the Python on my machine if I say upgrade now Python version 311 is there 64 bit version is there right so basically we have seen from where we can download PyCharm from where we can download Visual Studio and from where we can download Python let it install and we have other editors also you know if somebody wants Komodo editor then I have explained from the active state right Komodo edit for Windows other editor can also be downloaded for Python based programming right now before we run that python version all over again see in python we need to understand let's see a bird's eye view let's see a basic overview you know how things look like right so after knowing this basic history thing see uh, Python see Python does not look like Java or JavaScript or you know even .NET framework because here in Python I will tell you that we don't use curly braces right there are no curly braces for example these these are called as curly braces or these are called as figure bracket so here we don't have these curly braces or figure bracket right similarly in python there is no semicolon there is no semicolon right there is no semicolon to end the statement semicolon is there in every other language right here we don't have now here in python we have something which is very unique something called as line ending right and something called as indentation you know everything is you know we we format everything correctly so line ending and indentation is considered to be meaningful in python right so this is a basic fundamental difference between python and other languages in python you don't have curly braces or figure bracket in python you don't have semicolon in Python line ending and indentation is meaningful and of course I am again saying the same st statement in Python everything is an object which is a unique thing right because Python is created on an object unique object model right which I'll tell you you know over the period of this course I'll tell you why it is based on a unique object model right so and here in python script i'm running this pycharm maybe because of that so if i create another script for example if i name that file as simple prints in python let's say this is my file right and here the first statement is actually the interpreter you know uh, so comments are written with the hash sign or a pound sign so python script you might see with the copyright sign right and it could be 2023 it could be let's say you know something like this right this is a copyright sign this is a comment basically basic comments which is written on top of every script and after that simple print you know print that you know welcome everyone for you know welcome everyone on board uh, so we are going to learn the python script there is no semicolon right similarly i can write another python script you know statements also uh, python version is not getting updated but 
so if i say welcome everyone and python you know is based on in, uh, is based on unique object model if i save this and if i run this file it will simply print these two strings in the languages you have to create functions and all that right so but first thing that every script should have you know it uh, before comments also you know it is something called as hash bang line or shebang line basically you know at server level your python interpreter might reside in this in this location so basically you have to mention where is python 3 interpreter resides so that first statement is actually that right this is called as a hash bang line hash this hash sign and exclamation is a bang name so just to mention where the python interpreter ex exists right so when you save this the output will be Python was not found at this location because this is not a you know server side location right but but you know when you run this Python script as part of any application on the server side the first line is the interpreter right where is the Python interpreter you know who will who will you know compile and interpret this Python script basically right and after that you know after that we can create functions also for example i was telling you that at anywhere you can load a module right and after that you can create functions like this for example you know you can create a function see the line ending in the indentation and here if i use oh, i was using the format function earlier I can using the f string type that the python version on my system is so here comes the figure bracket you know inside uh, to put the data within double quotes the module dot python version right and to call this script to run this script we do like this right this is the way we run the script now this python i'm just waiting for this indexes to be over so if i run the same thing again yes it has now taken the version also right if i go back to my earlier file and run that same file core philosophies <laughs> right platform version is oh i did not put a figure bracket here so there are two ways to put data inside the you know there are two ways to put the data inside the statement right so one is this f string type this is the f string type right where you mention f in front and putting a figure bracket within double quotes and calling the function with the help of a module and this was calling a format function on this object this string is an object basically i told you everything is an object in python so on the object i am calling the format function and i am printing the value whatever it is but here using f string type i can include a module as part of you know my statement itself and run it run it basically now here also you have multiple method invocation so i'm just giving you the overview right for example here you are calling a message function right so first a message function will call 
in the message function you know earlier i was printing a python version i can call other things also but here i'm just send, saying you know uh, this is method invocation so first a method invocation statement will print right if i print this now first you know it, it says uh, first these two print is coming welcome everyone python is based on unique object model then comes the method invocation and in the end python version so you can call one function from the other function unless and until the syntax is correct right any questions as of now No, no, Yogesh, I'm good. Okay. One question in previous uh, uh, the uh, like uh, script core philosophies. Can you go to that one? Hmm. Here we didn't use any main function, right? Uh, Still, it's printing the uh, form. No, uh, no, Yogesh. You know, by the portion is at the uh, string format. One uh, question it's printing, in previous and it's simple prints uh, we the... using. Main uh, function, right? Like, uh, script core philosophy. Can one, you go to that uh, one? How how it works? You know, uh, here we don't call it the main function. Main function, function can, right? Uh, still, still it's printing the, the uh, uh, for uh, I mean, still you know Python the, version the is like you know uh, string Python version format. is uh, uh, it's printing. The method in and in the simple print we use one, main function, right? right? So the here, other one, uh, you know, how how it works? You know, uh, without calling the main function, also we can still use the. We still Let print that the script like you know so, python version is uh, you know it happens the in other method languages so as the i told one, you first should be the interpreter line then comments come but if i don't do anything and if i simply print you know hi everyone this statement right so if i just write this okay and if i call main is not a keyword in this oh i did not mention it as a py file so refactor the refactoring it is saying it delete a file let me just delete it once delete so if I create a file, main is not a keyword dot py, and if I simply say print hi everyone, it will simply print that. I created it in inside env folder v env folder ls It simply prints hi everyone now what I wanted to tell you was here it is a procedural kind of a language you know even if you create a function ABC right and if I simply write here print that you know ABC will work like main function only right and here if I simply say if this this I have to write that done this is called as a dunder function you know to run this script I will simply say start with the ABC function right so it will give me this output ABC will work like main only even if even if this script doesn't have a main 
right but as a part of a good programming practice they say they recommend you should use this keyword because it happens in other languages also right but it is not mandatory this is my point and even if you don't write all this right even this even without this also your script will work here we don't need i told you now it doesn't look like other languages you know this is kind of a procedural kind of a syntax it doesn't require a function also to run right this is called as a general anatomy you know basically how a basic script can run this is how a unix script also runs basically okay okay right see after that comes you know we have learned few basic facts right we have learned the basic history few basic that you know everything okay. is an object in python okay yes see after that you know there are some expressions for example you know the we have written statements as of now in the python script but we have got certain expressions also for example you know i will tell you that you know x is equal to y you know these are the kinds of expression this is called as an assignment that you are assigning a value y to x right similarly if you want to multiply divide plus or subtract this is called as you know uh, these are mathematical operations but this is you know within round brackets like in java you have every function which is followed by you know round brackets but here round bracket means tuple some programmers called it tuple but you know this is tuple right so this is called as an aggregated value i will tell you how tuple works you know right so and even if you have to call a function you will use like this only functions called are done like this similarly here we have a you know some constant values also that even if you want to give a true or a false value to a variable you can do that right so all these expressions are very much possible in java right so uh, all these expressions and you have control flow statements also for example till now i did not write if condition right so if i simply say true right this is a boolean expression so true will always work so if i simply say true you know so if condition will work you know after that i can say else you know else block will work right so if i run this file main is not a keyword right so it simply says if condition will work right so we are having a function call basically uh, inside if if else you can have elif also right so just giving you a introduction but if somewhere let's say if i go back to my other uh, this if here if i say if true and here print i simply say hi and else block if i say you know hello this if will always work right but what i want to tell you is if i spoil the indentation right if i spoil my indentation here if i here say print you know print let's say by then this is a syntactical error because indentation is incorrect 
right so i have to be cautious about the line ending and the indentation in python right and i was telling you these co comments are followed by the pound sign or a hash sign okay so this is basics right see so what if we want to uh, comment more than like 10 lines something like that right more than 10 lines uh, you have see uh, even the multiple python comments you do it like this only so what like if we want to uh, uh, comment more than like 10 lines like, this, like that like in other languages you know this comments are not written like this right so this has no meaning in python okay multiple uh -huh. comment multiple line comments is also written with the multiple hash or multiple pound sign right yeah again i will confirm this but that is you know according to me that is how it should be okay right so you know now we'll start using this expression so just one last example if after that if you want we can wrap it up so you know this is the kind of assignment that i was telling you that okay you know let's say x is equal to 42 or x is equal to 35 let's say right after that you can print the value of x right you can put that in a variable also so here in the variable you said you know the value of x and using format function you printed the value of x and then using print you just printed the statement right so when this works you see right here str Oh, sorry format spelling was wrong so let me correct the spelling and let it run again so it says the value of x is 35 right this is a basic assignment that i was telling you right and one last thing like for example you can print a you know in if you are aware about a c language so it was also based on a unix shell scripting language right in the C language we can do the same thing and first before I write this uh, you know you can use the F string type also for example if you could have said F you know just copy the same thing and within here if I simply say X and if I print S2 it will give me the same output you know this is called a F string type and I was telling you about C language thing that you know I was telling you about C language so in C language you can print a variable we are printing a variable right so I could have said you know according to C language the value of X is the number is a digit and the value is X it will give me same output so just a point that since that was also based on a shell scripting language this is also a script so somehow their format follows uh, the, you know their syntax uh, their you know the kind of programming is common between these scripting languages just a just a basic thing but we don't have to go into much you know all that right so you know so we saw how to see the basic fundamentals using simple import this statement and basic if else you know statement basic if function and you know wherever you can basically you should always load a module in the beginning and here we don't have to write a main functions line ending and indentation is everything curly brackets and you know semicolon we don't use that right okay so okay. 
see after that i have to talk about block and scope in python so if you want we can wrap up here uh, i don't want to rush things right and if you want i can proceed or if you want uh, okay. you know um you can continue today we can continue today okay yeah okay so let's talk about the block and scopes so for that i'm going to create a new python file with the name called block and scopes in python um you can continue to see now block is how things yeah. are delimited basically and scope is after the block is over what is the scope of your variable because here i told you in python we don't have right in python we don't have brackets right so here we have a special character for blocks because the only thing is we use indentation right so if i say x is 10 and if i say y is 15 or 16 then I, then this is a what a block is if x is less than y 10 is less than 16 then i can print you know the value of x and y so here if i simply say you know x is less than y where x is first first placeholder and y is second placeholder so using f string type if i mention x here and if i mention y here and using else block right if, if using else block you know i could have said the opposite that x is actually greater than y where x is this now if i run this you know the name of a file is block it simply says the value of x and y you know x is less than y where x is 10 and y is 16 now these are blocks now what is the scope see if i introduce a new variable z with value 19 right after this if block if i print the value of z you know it will print if i say the value of z is on this if i call a format function it will print the value of z as 19 right so here i again did not put a placeholder if i put a placeholder it says the value of z is 19 because this block got executed right but anyhow if this block is not executed right if let's say the value of x is 17 so the if block will not work in that case you know i got this error that z is not defined so the scope of a variable is dependent on you know the block basically you know the scope of a variable is dependent on the block basically and block is how is written basically following the indentation part right so scope is based on the block basically right similar to that you know i started the concept of conditionals this if else is nothing but conditionals you know and how we run conditionals in the code you know but here in python there is something which is little different you know conditionals works differently in python for example if i simply say you know x again is 10 and y again is 16 right if i say x greater than y and again if i go here and if i copy this line and here if i paste this line that x is less than sorry x is yeah if x is less than y then x is less than y where x is this y is this so here elif can come multiple conditions and other comparisons you can make so here you can you could have said if you know here x is equal to y 
you know where x is this another elif and you said x is greater than y right you said x is greater than greater than y where x is this and y is this and last you can have a you know optional else block right so here I, I simply said something is wrong or this is a unhandled scenario in your script right so now you know we have not written this as part of a function so if I run this it will simply print the first one py the name of a file is conditionals works differently it simply says you know x is less than y where x is 10 and y is 16 but if I say x and y both are 16 and if I run this again it says x is equal to y where x and y both are 16 similarly if I make you know this 17 my point is multiple conditionals can be mentioned using elif in python this is something which is not there in other languages other languages have f if else if else if else if else here we have something called as elif basically first condition right okay fine then you have got loops also in python you know this was equivalent to switch case in java and other languages how you manage other cases right right so here you could have mentioned let's say the different days of a week now in python you know a list is represented by square bracket a list is represented by square bracket yeah. okay so within square bracket I'm going to write let's say Monday Tuesday Wednesday so three Mench three days I have written. I introduce one more variable n as zero, right? And I simply use this loop. If n is less than four, right? Then print the, you know, print the list. The list name is days of a week, and you know I simply mention n here. And this is how I'm going to update the value. So this is called as updation. This is called as Boolean expression. You know how we evaluate. And this is called as initialization. Right? So we created a list. I'll tell you list is a mutable data structure in Python. right and this is why I initialize a variable and this is how a loop got started so now if I run this loop it simply says Monday Tuesday and Wednesday just a second so there is an error that you know it this is out of range so I have 0 1 and 2 and I did till 4 so if I do it till 3, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Similarly, if you put Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it will print. Right? So what, do you, what do you mean by mutable data structure? Yeah. So I will tell you list data structure in detail. But just for your understanding, there are there is a term called mutability or un immutability. Mutable means 
whose original value does change. So what do you, what do you mean by mutable data so structure? Just remember for now that list is a mutable data structure, whereas tuple is a immutable data structure. Immutable means where original value does not change or original value cannot change. Right, which I will prove you that tuple is basically used where we don't want the original value. List is used, oh, sorry, where we want the original value because original value doesn't change in the case of tuple, but in the case of list, it changes. Okay, okay, okay. so this is how you know a loop. Now, let me give you a little tough example. You know the Fibonacci series, yeah. Fibonacci series that you know addition of previous two numbers. Okay, got it. You know, let's say if I give you a series 0 1, then 0 1 1, 1 1 yeah. 2, 2 1 3, 3 2 5, 5 3 8, 8 5 13. This is Fibonacci series. Now I can initialize two variables in a single line. This is just to show you I am giving a as 0 and b as 1 in a single line. This is possible in a script. So my first two numbers were 0 and 1 which I gave here. Then I simply said I want to go till 1000. So this is my limit that I would like to print the series till 1000 okay yeah. and I would like to print B followed by some spaces and don't keep anything in the local memory cache memory right and and means <coughs> you know followed by spaces and flush means don't put anything in the local memory now how am I going to print the first two in the second and the I'm going to update the second value also so this is how I'm going to do so a will become B and B will become a plus B this is my entire logic and in the end just one empty line you know just an empty line but if I show you this loops again you know it shows me a Fibonacci series just a second so it see 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 21 34 addition of previous till numbers till 1000 right and if I say followed by a semicolon not space it puts semicolon in between right so, so end works like uh, uh, it's okay. how we show the gap between the numbers or something like that yeah right okay okay so just one more example you have a for loop also in python but same thing for example so end i was talking like about a, days uh, of a week it's as how part we of show the gap between the numbers or also something like that. i will talk about days of a week as part of a okay. list only but here I will simply say for each and every word inside days of a week. Right? And I just want to print this value i. So it will print the days of a week again. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This is a basic example of a, you know, for loop. How we will go into each and every index of my list. List is represented by square bracket. Okay. okay. So this is just an introduction. We will talk about concepts in detail. Mm -hmm.
Okay. So after this, I have to talk about functions. Shall I continue or shall we talk? We take it tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow.